Are you wasting time learning Perl programming in 2020? Well, you reached the right video. Let me explain. This video was brought to you by Diginic Academy, your number one source to learn how to make money programming and get that six figure salary you desire. Our academy have a wide range of courses, including 3K in 30 days, our mentorship membership program, and much, much more. When you sign up for our free community, you get access to our membership community with like-minded professional who's going to help take your career to the next level. So let's take the first step to get started and really take your career to the next level with our seven step money guide today. So let's go ahead and click the link below to sign up for our free seven step guide to help you get your career started today. So guys, learning a legacy programming language like Perl is not always a bad thing. It's not always that you can't find a job or it's a bad programming language to learn. It really come down to the market and what the use cases for that particular programming language. Let's stick with Perl since we're there. Perl has been around for over 25 years, probably more than 30 now, and it's still used pretty heavily by some organizations. Primary problem is, trying to use that same programming language across multiple companies in a uh, market. That's where learning a newer programming language or a much more used programming language like Java, which Java has been around just as long, maybe 20 plus years, but it's still used on a heavy basis and have corporate backing, guys. But I have a couple of factors that I want to cover. But guys, before I get started, really wanted to talk about some of the things that got me to the point that I am in now, as far as just which programming languages you use, uh, why Pro Perl suck, and really trying to get you guys a better understanding about picking a programming language. I think that particular topic is way, 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 way overused, and people just use all these parameters to find out which the best programming language, but nobody ever looks at their local job market. And the reason I say local is because each region have a specific programming language that they use. So where I wanna live and where you want to live it could be to totally separate markets that's why I'm not a huge fan of giving you guys a blanket one uh, programming language to use all the time so let's stick with Perl well when I was coming out of college COBOL was the big thing um, that's what they taught at least at Mississippi State um, everybody in the entire program that's what they geared their criteria off COBOL which at the time was still it's outdated today it's still out there still outdated back then but they didn't want to change that cri uh, curriculum and and that's basically what it is. Immediately after I got out of college, I didn't have job prospects specifically on COBOL, but I took those fundamentals and really used that to get into the uh, SQLs and the uh, C Sharps of the world and really made my mark as far as just being a developer to where my career is today. You guys need to do the same thing. The good news about colleges is they, I think they're leaning more towards Python, but again, let's talk about Perl. Some of you guys have learned Perl and you're in the same exact situation that I was in and you're trying to figure out how you can leverage your Perl knowledge so that you can get that Perl um, job and really trying to take your career to the next level using Perl. First of all, guys, it's gonna be an uphill battle. I got at least 12 factors here that's gonna really help you position your Perl skills so that you can get a job and don't make it sucks as much. Disclaimer, if you haven't learned Perl yet and you're using this video to decide if you wanna um, learn Perl, do not learn Perl check your local job market first and if you have at least four or five major the biggest companies in your region that do Perl development then yes but I would be shocked if anybody have five of the biggest companies in their city major city that use Perl as its primary program language I'd be very shocked but if you are that small few then yes but if you just trying to figure out hey should I learn Perl as a secondary or third language to add in my arsenal I'm gonna give you some factors to really determine that here guys so number one is it are you learning Perl for a hobby or for a profession if you do if you're just doing this for a hobby turn this video off stick to what you're doing because you're gonna pick the right spot as far as just well first of all hobbies you dictate what you want to learn so go ahead and learn it but if you are from a professional side you want to make money doing this you want to position your career 
position yourself to have a long lasting career, then I would say probably not unless you have those top five companies being primarily Pearl Develop. Even if it's secondary, I wouldn't be too hard on you, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, you know, you got other programming languages like Java, C Sharp, Python, that's probably gonna most of the time win out in front of Pearl. Um, that brings me to my next point. It doesn't have a niche pur a purpose that gives us, give it an advantage in the marketplace. Let me explain. Python is different guys because you gotta understand what Python is used for data science. It's putting a lot of legacy programming languages out of business because of the easy write case and is learned it got a huge community is modern and a lot of people like to use it in a data science world ai all that have a specific use case that other programming languages have but it's tailored more towards that c sharp and java in the enterprise world you get into these uh, major enterprises who want a uh, programming language that's solid that's been around that's stable it may not be the best when it comes to write time or read time, but it's there and it's solid and they can use it across their organization and feel confident that it works. Python, Python C Sharp, even PHP to a certain extent with the web development, JavaScript with the front end, React and all that stuff have a unique advantage in the market pace. Perl used to have this earlier on until programming languages like Python and other languages come along and start chipping away at, the, at those advantages. That's one reason why Python's or Perl is falling. The competition guys, competitors. Python is just Python or Perl. If you're a brand new company, go with Python. If you're a legacy company just trying to maintain legacy Perl code, then do that. I'm not gonna knock you for that, but the minute you have an opportunity to expand or change that core system, it's probably gonna go to another programming language. That's why I tell you guys, legacy code, you can get a job working on legacy code, but the minute they decide to switch to something more modern, you better be ready, uh, willing to switch and get your skills on the right track job demand guys this is a huge one yeah their demand for software developers but if you have a specific skill like Perl or Python it puts you on the top of the list not to say you can't get a job but you want to put yourself in the best position to be a no-brainer for the company being a Perl developer unless you have a company that have a legacy Perl system yeah you'll be on the top of that but the rest of the companies no you will not they're gonna see you as learn having older knowledge it's not necessarily modern. This is very important to you guys, especially for your older age developers. It's very, it's very important that they perceive you as somebody who wanna learn technology and gonna move their company forward with software development and programming languages. Having Perl on there kinda communicates you're not. Um, number five, the age, perceived age. It's been around 30 plus years. Again, Java's been around just as long almost, but it's just the use case, guys. Perl has not aged well. Um, number six, the learning curve is actually not that bad compared to other programming languages. Um, it's just one of those things where the community, well, I'll get to more of the, the other ones in a, in a second here, but the learning curve is not that bad. But it's just one of those things where, you know, the pro, the cons outweigh the pros on this one. Uh, write time, read time is average, guys. Um, it's not you know, just super fast compared to C, but the write time is just don't blow you away like a Python. So it's about average, I'll do that. The growth, there's no growth, guys. This is one of the main reasons why it not really moving forward because of the growth is just not there. Um, you got Python, other programming languages chipping away at the market demand for new programming projects, and Python, uh, uh, Perl is just not gonna cut it. Oh, the community. It has a decent sized community. Community is solid, but still, guys, uh, dying languages, all the legacy code out there is probably not an active community. It's probably a, a, a community of people who've used Perl in some point in their career, but may not necessarily use that as a primary language now. So you gotta understand that part of it too. Um, no corporate backing, guys. This is a huge one. This is what keeps Java and Perl so far apart as far as just the corporate backing. You got Oracle, you got a lot of the other uh, major corporations who use um, 
the Java, and the same with Microsoft C Sharp. Perl do not have any corporate backing that I'm aware of. If so, comment below. Um, no popular programming languages or modern uh, software's packages that are written in Perl, you know. Maybe there's some out there. You guys comment below. Let me know what I'm missing. But I'm talking about the uh, Adobe's top program, top software applications enterprises. I'm not sure of anything that's in 2020 written in Perl. And last but not least, the salary's average, guys. Salary's just average. Uh, you know, it's within the lines of a standard programmer. It's not gonna blow you away. That's just give you another reason just to go with a more modern programming language because it's gonna give you options as far as just um, growth in the future. And uh, guys, I just wanna cover this and let you guys know, again, if you're doing this for a hobby, continue to learn Perl. But from a professional standpoint, you're just getting started as a beginner, go with another programming language. I would start with something, me, I'm a SQL developer, so I use SQL, but some of you guys can use Python, uh, C Sharp, uh, Java, even PHP, uh, JavaScript, somewhere along that line. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily pick, Perl wouldn't be my best, my first option. But if I'm a legacy program, I've been using Perl for years, I'm pretty solid, I got a network, I know other companies who utilize Perl, no problem with that either. Just know that hey you know I might be in a situation where uh, I might not be able to find a job as fast as a modern programming language guy so if you like the comment if you like the content comment below do you agree with me do you disagree with me comment below like subscribe to the content guys go check out my seven step guide if you haven't already links are below and if you already signed up for my seven step guide go ahead and check out some of my premium courses guys i really want to position you guys to be a developer really take your skills to the next level so links are below so you can support the channel like subscribe to the content i'll have links to my seven step guide here so you guys go check out the content or the channel see you guys in the comments peace